and thank you for joining me today for this webinar about the Wintra. Um, I'll just give a couple more seconds whilst people uh, are still joining us. Hope you've all had a good day today um, and a good start to the year. Hi, Tom. Welcome. Hi, Stephen. So thanks for joining me. Um, this is the webinar about the Wintra VTOL system. And we're basically going to go through some of its features and why the Wintra is the best fixed wing slash VTOL system on the market. And how do I find myself here talking to you about it? So I'm James. I am the business development manager at Copters. Um, and I mainly work with survey construction businesses uh, to enable them to use drones um, to the best of their abilities for help and support. Um, I said I did surveying and mapping science at Newcastle University a few years ago and did my final year project in drones, uh, basically using it in a coastal monitoring environment where we used a fixed wing to compare uh, traditional methods and um, uh, with, with, with uh, newer technology at the time, which was drones and with some really incredible results um, even back then. So after I left university, I worked uh, in the offshore industry as a dimensional control surveyor. Uh, so I got to travel the world uh, and uh, and learn from uh, from experience in the field about surveying. And it's really useful. I learned a, a lot out and worked some really great uh, surveyors along the way and picked up a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. Um, then worked, uh, joined COPS in 2017, where I said I work with surveyors, construction businesses, anybody who wants to get the boat, the most out of drones in a uh, surveying geospatial kind of way. So we don't just sell the Wingtra at Copters. We're, we're firmly committed to the survey industry. So we sell the Wingtra VTOL system. Very proud to be uh, the first uh, UK supplier of them. And we've achieved um, European prime distribution um, uh, specialist this year from them. We're a Pix4D reseller and um, a trainer where we've also become a uh, prime reseller for them as well. We do Global Mapper, which is a GIS based system as well. Really great software and a really good price as well. Uh, we do phase one uh, metric cameras. They do the IXM model, which is a uh, the best camera on the market for survey applications uh, and, and used across the board in a multitude of industries, including inspection. But for the highest possible survey grade results with the highest possible quality, look no further than the IXM. Uh, LIDAR USA partner with them guys in the States. There's nothing which them guys haven't put LIDAR on in one uh, way or another. So you're talking things like fixed wing drones, talking about multi-rotors, vehicles, quad bikes, boats, anything which you can basically fit a LIDAR sensor on. There's a very good chance that them guys have already done it. And as we probably know, we are a DJI enterprise partner in the UK. So if you uh, um, look for anything from sort of a smaller entry level DJI drones like Phantom 4 RTKs, which I'm a huge fan of, all the way up to the bigger M300s, that kind of thing. So we just work with some of our partners who we work with in the UK in terms of businesses. So, you know, large civil engineers near businesses um, to smaller independent survey firms as well. We don't differentiate at Copters. Um, we don't care if you're just a small one man band to large um, organizations. It was the same service across the board, uh, a very personal touch with that help and support along the way, which we know people in this industry need that. Um, and that's why a lot of people come to us because we offer that help and support, especially like myself to help guide, support you along the way so that you get the most out of your investment and you're happy with that data, which you're handing over to um, the client. So we look at Wingtra. So um, Wingtra aren't new. Um, they have been making drones since 2016 in Zurich, Switzerland, and now have a global presence um, across the board in Europe, um, uh, the Middle East, uh, the States. Um, and they have grown massively from where they were um, all them years ago. And we've, we've been with them every step of, the, step of the way as a UK partner. And they really are leading this VTOL technology um, with their Wing to One system. And uh, they themselves as a business, they're, they're, they're big themselves. They have up to 80 plus people working in the organization from R&D to the marketing side and the support side as well. Um, so um, in terms of investment, you've got that support not only of ourselves, but from the manufacturer as well, which is vitally important to get to get the most out of these systems. So where is the Wing to mainly used? Well, Typically, as, as most of you would expect, with, with it being kind of 
design for the survey and mapping industry that ticks all the boxes um, in that respect. And also in terms of mining, as we imagine, large quarries or open cast mines, it really does come into its own. Uh, the wing tour will be able to collect large, large amounts of data sets at the highest quality um, in a very fast um, time. And also the agricultural side of it, you can equip these with uh, multi-spectral cameras like the Micasense, um, the Red Edge or the Altum. And also an example there, which we'll have a look at uh, a little bit more of a look at about tracking wildlife um, in the sea as well. So in terms of also um, what uh, we like to promote and like wings we like to promote themselves as a business is the success stories. Um, as we've touched on, these have been used uh, across the globe um, with a multitude of success stories. You only have to look on the, the Winters website where they'll go into detail with, with case studies and testimonials from clients saying what a great product this is. Um, and I've been flying it for about three years now and I, I, I love it as a product. Um, if any of you spoke to me in the past, um, it's certainly one of my favorite things we sell at Copters. Um, and one of the things I really get excited about doing demos for with people and just seeing the quality of data um, from the system. So why are people using the Wing to One? Well, cer certainly from a, um, a, a survey perspective, um, high quality resolution. So we can get down to sort of 0 0.7 centimeters pixel and um, around around about a centimeter um, GSD um, as a high accurate PPK module on it. So when we're looking and comparing these with some checkpoints we put down on the ground, typically we're around that sort of 10 mil um, accuracy check on that. And we can cover large and large areas with this. Um, I've got some examples which I can uh, we're going to touch on later on. Um, but as a most recent example, I had the winter out last Wednesday morning um, with a with a with a survey business and we flew 120 acres in about 40 minutes of flying at around about 1.1 centimeter GST. So that's fine at 120 meters. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's that's unbelievable amount of coverage in such a short space of time. And uh, typically on site, all we did is I was probably we put about 10 checkpoints across the whole site. Um, that probably took around about an hour and then we flew it in 40 minutes. So in a couple of hours uh, and an hour, if you wanted to travel, uh, I'd travel onto that as well. That's three hours. 120 acre survey uh, completed. And it's VTOL systems. This particular site probably wouldn't have been ideal for a typical belly lander, fixed wing drone. Uh, we were taking off um, on some kind of old uh, rough ground um, where time was, uh, area was quite precious. So we had one takeoff and landing area, which could even be done with, with the VTOL capabilities. And it's safe as well. And we can also control it on the on the descent as well. So perfectly safe and, and very, very easy to use. There's this kind of thing about fixed wings that people think that they're hard to fly. And I'm not sure if this is because they're, you know, some people are from that kind of day where they've probably flown um, RC model planes before, and obviously they're very difficult to fly. The wing is not like that. It's very easy to fly, as easy to use as a, uh, a multi-rotor like a Phantom 4 RTK. So the learning curve, if you're already used to flying drones, is 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 not um, very difficult at all. It's not a steep learning curve. You can move over from um, a small mortar rotor to a wing chair very very easily. So what? Why are people using it again? Well, obviously mapping these un unreachable areas and uh, and and large areas as well. But um, typically as well, I mean, I know a lot of people think that fixed wing drones are used to or only can be used in, in a large mapping application, which I, I really don't agree with. You know, you've got this VTOL capability. You are you you can take up and land off, land in areas like you would with a Phantom 4 RTK, and with it being VTOL, you can use these for small to medium size areas as well. So there's no real problem um, with using these in a um, in a small or to medium size environment, which makes your return on investment a lot better. You're not just trying to find them big um, mapping jobs to use them on. You can use them for sort of day to day work as well. Uh, I just noticed, Darren, you've put a question in. Um, if you'd like to put any questions you've got at the bottom of this screen, um, and um, I will answer them at the end. Um, so ask anything about wing tour, about the surveying side, more than happy to uh, take questions on anything at all. Um, I'll just touch on yours now. Dan, seems you haven't put it in that one. The task you talk about took three hours to undertake. Out of interest, how long did the crunch and data take? Well, the data was about 30 gig 
from that site. So for the 40 minutes of flying, flying it was about 40, 40 gigs. So um, I didn't process it. The, the company processed it. So for the PPK, PPK side, so uh, geotagging them with a, uh, the, the highly accurate coordinates took maybe 10 minutes. For the processing, it took place in PIX4D. Um, that probably took for the initial processing. And bear in mind, this business does have you know powerful computers. Took maybe an hour and a half um, for that. And then also in terms of the actual producing of, say, a point cloud, which was the end deliverable in this sort of context, um, took six or seven hours. But they processed that not on the optimal. Uh, if you're used to PIX4, you have the option of picking how many points if you want a, a low density a medium density or high density they went for the various the, the highest density possible good in pixel d so that took us six, about six six odd hours now whilst we're on the topic of file sizes let's not forget if you had to um do that job say with a phantom 4 rtk there's not really too much difference in storage time because what you you'll actually have more data from it so if you imagine you're flying 120 acres of phantom 4 rtk you're going to be flying at a much lower altitude so you won't be able to push that 120 meters like you could with the wincher. So let's say you're flying at 55 meters to achieve about a 1.5 centimeter GSD. So you're going to have so, so much more data. It's going to take you a hell of a, lot, a, a long time to fly that as well. Um, and also, you know, with the wincher, it's a 42 megabit, megabyte camera, uh, megapixel camera. And I often hear people say, yeah, that's huge file sizes. But what you're forgetting is it's double the sensor size of the Phantom 4 RTK. So it's going to make no difference in terms of one-to-one um, -one comparison with Phantom. But you've got that added benefit if you are flying much higher with a much bigger footprint. So in essence, you'll probably find that your data is slightly smaller. So certainly won't impede any processing time. And as we touched on, we've got the, this high-grade um, PPK module on there as well. So we talk about like mapping unreachable areas. So we've got this benefit with it being VTOL. We can really take off and land within a, a two meter by two meter area, like on boats or in forest runs. I know some guys in um, in Europe are doing that. Um, but you've also got that advantage of um, you're in full control of it. So even on the descent of the winter, you can stall it. You can bring it down at a controlled manner. If it's gusting, for example, you can pause it. And wait for the wind to die down and, and, and bring it down manually yourself. So even though it is this automated system, you still have that control and you can move it into the um, um, into the vertical position as well as into the fixed wing uh, uh, position, even throughout a mission as well. So you can pause it, let it hover, then resume the mission as well. And it's very gentle. We need to really refine this technology and the algorithms to bring that down safely even in really, really uh, windy conditions. And I've got a, a, a video I can show you of it coming down in very gusty conditions because a lot of people kind of think with it being the size and it being like a large surface, area, it struggles in the wind and it's just not true at all. And also we've got this control. You might see above other belly landing drones that we're always constantly landing them and we're damaging the cameras on them or we're damaging uh, props or wings. That's not the case of the wing because it's always controlled. Um, we can... We can um, um, we can bring it down in, in, in a way which, which, which fits our purposes. And we can adjust this too as well. You know, if, if, if there's wind, we can move it slightly over to maybe into a more um, sheltered area. Um, so, Tom, just put your questions down at the bottom. There is a questions page. Um, flight control it uses is a, is a Pixel Q um, on the winter one. So on to our next slide. So this is just a nice little uh, something which we probably wouldn't have thought of we can use the winter for. But in this kind of um, application, it was used for monitoring sort of manatees in Australia. So this was take the takeoff and landing areas on a boat. So it was a very much a dynamic um, uh, environment. The boat was obviously moving and bobbing up and down. The great thing about the winter is, is it has a, a small sensor underneath, which kicks in at about 30 meters. So it's constantly trying to adjust and control that landing. And I've taken off in some really weird and wonderful areas with, with gusting winds. And it's one of those products which I've always had that utmost confidence in that's going to do exactly what um, I want it to do. And this was just a nice application where we always think of sort of fixed wings with cameras on sort of from a always some kind of a mapping surveying application. But it can be used in other applications which we might not necessarily think of. And in this case, um, it was the um, um, the, uh, the, uh, the the wildlife kind of monitoring. Uh, way. 
So we talk about this like large area of coverage. I mean, a good example I'll show you later on where we covered about 200 acres in a very small amount of time. But as we touched on before, because we're using this high quality sensor, we are covering a, a huge area, but still not losing um, um, a, a, a GSD. We're still being able to be able 